All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Advent. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. Any content that we go over today or any content that I do have on any of my platforms that you know me on it is strictly for educational purposes. It is not for, um, it's not financial advice. Trading does have its risks, so please do your research before you engage in trading. So um, for those who are new here for the trader circle, the trader circle, um, formerly known as the monthly mindset Q&A, to me, the trader circle just made more sense. It's like, you know, a circle of traders. We all come together and we discuss trading. You can ask me any questions and so on and so forth. Uh, but essentially what the trader circle is, it's just a free group coaching session. So literally any questions that you want to ask me, um, you're more than welcome to. You can uh, either come off, you can either uh, come off voice or come off mute and ask me. You can type it in the chat, however you want to do it. It really doesn't matter. And, and, you know, we just do that for a whole hour or so. Sometimes we go over, which is okay. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what this is. Ask me whatever you want and I'll answer. Uh, getting started, I'll answer this question that Moon mentioned earlier. Uh, she wanted me to go over some setups that my cousin would take. Uh, so for example, you guys can see my chart, right, with SPY? Yes. Cool. So let's go to ES, which is he trades ES and YM. So a trade that he took on Friday was this TTO right here. I think it was about the 15 minute time frame, if I recall correctly. Or no, no, the 30 minute. He took it off the 30 minute. To me, the 15 minute was better, but the 30 minute is still valid. So he went long right here on this TTO. I think his stop loss was like here, but I told him to. You need to make it a little wider. So it could be down here or down here. But his stop loss was something like this. His target was this wicks high. I think, the, yeah, the wicks high. No, no, it was the body, I think. No, it was a tick right be be below that. So this was his trade. Uh, about three to four and a half point stop loss. His target was six points and change. With one ES contract, that's about $375. Or was it 600, uh, six, no, no, three, 337, if, if my math is correct. Yeah, 337 with one ES contract. Or if you use micros, that's 30, 34, $35 around there. Something like that. So this will be an example of a trade he would take, this TTO. Or if you were on the 15 minute, you could have taken this TTO, but a little earlier on the 15 minute. So entry will be once that inside bar breaks to the upside, I would put my stop loss down here and my target will be up here. So nine points risking seven and a half. But if the TTO is valid, it should continue higher, which it did. It doesn't happen all the time, but if it's a, if it's a legitimate trend day, it'll continue going up as we had on Friday. So it ended up going about 30, like 28, 29 points until it reversed. So it went at least 21 points if you kept on moving your runner up. My goal when I used to trade ES was 10 points a day. So there's literally almost three days worth of uh, profit target in, was that 12.15 to pretty much an hour and a half gave three days worth of profits that I would have been happy with. So that is an example of a trade he would take. Um, what else he would he take? He'll probably take this like two and two up or this two, two one hammer up. Um, this three, one, two down, he would probably take this two, one, two up. I think he might've taken this one. I think he got stopped out. I don't remember entirely. Uh, but yeah, those would be like an example of trades that he would take. Making sense? Any questions on that? No, that's good. Thank you. Cool. And again, you know, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. Just get a, a specific amount of setups and just focus on those, master them, and then, you know, only take those trades. Because with the strat... Every single candle is a trade, 
right? But you want to take the ones that you're comfortable with that have higher probability. That's why I prefer taking reversals than continuations. Unless it's a four-hour chart, then I'll take a continuation. But if it's like a lower time frame, I'm only going to be taking reversals back into continuity. Or if it's like a Momo hammer or Momo shooter, I'll take those continuations. But that's basically it. I don't take like regular two twos on the lower time frames. And when you are journaling and you're taking the strat setups, I highly implore you to write down, all right, this was a 15 minute two and two setup or whatever. This was a 30 minute, this was a one hour, whatever time frame you're doing it on. And then after, at, the, at the end of the week, uh, look at all your entries and make a list. I took 15, I took five 15 minute trades. I took five one hour trades. Out of those 10 trades, four out of the five, one on the 15 minute. And then let's say three out of the five, one on the one hour. So you can probably see, all right, looks like the, the specific 15 minute ones may be better for me than the one hour. So you can also determine what your pro what your most profitable time frame to take trades on is. Like for me, I just use the four hour for initial entry and the five or 15 minute. And that's it. That's all I use when I'm trading options and when I'm trading strat on futures. I don't use the I don't use a two minute. I don't use a three minute. I don't use the one hour two hour, I just use those three time frames and that's it. Cool. All right. Uh, let me bring up the questions that the participants asked. Also, friendly reminder for whoever is here and whoever's watching the replay when I put it on YouTube, you must attend these sessions to get your question answered. If you do not attend the session, I'm not going to answer your question. Where is the list of questions? Give me a second. I have to pull this up. You know, I like talking to human beings. I don't like talking to air. So... All right, let's see. Ashton is here and you're on the top of the list. Uh, you'd like to hear more about prop firms and what a su sufficient amount of startup capital would look like. Great question, Ashton. And you can come off mute when I start answering the question. And if you want to like go, you know, ask like a follow-up question or go deeper into it, definitely um, can do that. A question I have for you, Ashton, is um, when you... In, in the sense of prop firms, what specifically do you mean? Like, do you want me to like talk overall, like a quick little like uh, crash course on prop firms? Or do you like have a specific question about them? Hi, hey, uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for having these sessions. It's been really cool for me. Um, but I think overall for prop firms would be more beneficial for me right now than like a very specific question. I haven't started trading. I've just been reading about using your own capital and then taking challenges with prop firms to have access to larger accounts. And I just kind of wanted to know like what your perspective was on that. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I can definitely answer that. And of course, man, I definitely appreciate you as well for being here. Uh, all right, let's, let's bring up a prop firm website and then we'll just go from there. Uh, let's go to, let's go to Apex is that's since that's what I use. Um, so for those who don't know what a prop firm is, a prop firm is especially, it's pretty much like short for proprietary firm. They'll front you money, um, for a fee. And there's different types of prop firms. There's like prop firms like Apex, uh, Take Profit Trader, Top Step so on and so forth, where you pay a fee to, to take an evaluation. And then once you pass the evaluation, they'll give you like the funded account where you can get paid from. There are other proprietary firms that are like actual, like brick and mortar, like you can walk into the firm and they'll train you to trade for them. So there's different types of prop firms. 
Specifically, what I'm going to be talking about is like the online prop firms like Apex. So essentially, um, a big question that I always get is like, that that doesn't make sense. They're, so they're giving me 150K for like 297 bucks or generally Apex has a lot of discounts. Like they have 70, 80, 90% off basically all the time. So let's say with the discount, if you get, uh, let's say a 25K account, which they give you 25K, with the discount, you'll probably pay like 30 or 35 bucks a month until you pass the account. Now people are like, well, that doesn't make sense. Like what am I losing if I lose the account or if I blow the account? All you're losing is the amount you paid for the, for the, um, uh, what do you call it? For the, for the evaluation or for the account. So if I hit the threshold or the, the drawdown threshold and the account blows up, then, um, I failed the challenge and I need to pay again for a new challenge or pay the reset fee, either one um, that you would prefer. Generally, it's cheaper to just get a brand new account than pay the reset fee. I think the reset fee is like 50 or 80 bucks, depending on the account, or you could just get a new account for 35 bucks. And the prop firm doesn't lose anything because this is just demo. This is paper money. So keep that in mind. What they're winning is they're making money off of all the all the fees, all the um, entry fees. And once you get the actual account that you get paid from, the first $25,000 is yours. After that, it's a 90-10 split, if I recall correctly. So if I make $10,000 and I want to withdraw that, they will, they will take $1,000. I'll take $9,000, which to me, I'll gladly accept. You know, you can take your 10%. I'll take my, my 90. One thing to mention is that, well, I won't go too deep into that right now. That, that'll be for a little later on. Um, but yeah, essentially, um, once you get the prop, they, they have rules. There's a lot of rules. So I highly uh, recommend that you read up through the frequently asked questions, things like that. A big one for trade of eight is you cannot average down. If you average down, they will fail your challenge or even um, fail your funded account. So they don't allow um, averaging down because in their eyes, um, people like to average down into losing positions in the hope that the trade is going to uh, reverse and go in their favor. And they're, they're, then they're going to make more money. So to them, that'll be more like of a gambler than a trader. In my opinion, if your strategy involves averaging down, it is what it is. But as always, you know, this is a business for them. While they do have traders that work for them, that make money for them, they also make most of their money. Well, I don't know where they make most of their money, but a lot of their money comes from the fees that they charge for, for the accounts. So if you have a gambler that's averaging down and then winning all those average down trades and they're making more than they should be because they're gambling, you got to pay that out. So this is a way to protect them and also to um, weed out the poor traders, which makes sense. I get it. Um, but yeah, the contracts where it says here, um, that's the, um, the max amount that you can open on that account. So right here, uh, for the 25K account, you can get four mini contracts or 40 micro contracts. One thing that I'll note, just because they let you trade four mini contracts or 40 micros does not mean that you should. The max that you can lose on this account is 1500. Let's say for the sake of the conversation, I choose, I, I use four ES contracts on every trade. For one ES contract, let me bring this up on Thinkorswim. For one ES contract, we make or lose $50 uh, per point. Actually, where's the tick value? Why is it not showing here? There we go. So in one point of ES, 
it's $50. So if I get in, if it goes up or if it goes down, then um, I make or lose $50 depending on how many contracts I have and, and how many points from my entry. So if you're using four contracts, that's $200 per point that you make or lose in your favor. So based on the risk management guidelines or even looking at this, you are, what's that? You're seven and a half points from blowing up the account. That's literally like one candle on ES. So, um, you know, you don't want to over leverage. Remember, this is geared to, this is geared to work against you with all these rules and everything else that people have added here. Yes. So, uh, you want to make sure, well, I'll give you my um, guidance on what I would do here. I did make a, a video on risk management on my YouTube. Definitely check that out uh, where I go over all of this in detail. But just to give you an example on my experience, when I first started, I got a 25K account. Instead of using one mini, I, I got five micros. And I did five micros until I passed the account. And then once I passed, they send you an email congratulating you. And then you pay a, a one-time fee or a lifetime fee. I think it's like 140, 150 bucks or $160 that you pay to get the funded account. And then I continued using five micros until I got to the payout threshold. I got my payout and then I continued using five micros until I put a buffer on the account. So once I got my first payout, I took the account to 28K, again, taking my time with five micros. And once I got to 28K, in my head, 28K was my, my starting point. So now that I have a $3,000 buffer, I can size up. So from there, I use one mini contract or two mini contracts, whatever it was, until I grow the account more, get more payouts, and then I can size more and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's how I would approach um the prop firms, I would say there are pros, you know, if you don't have that much money starting out, this is a great thing to use because you can use the money that you make from this to fund your own accounts. Um, while I do trade, have my own future, like personal futures account and options account, et cetera, since I can leverage a little higher with the prop firms, I just use that to fund my own accounts and also to, you know, invest in other areas in my life. In, in the markets, so on and so forth. So like, for example, for my cousin that I'm teaching, I had, I went, I, I took him from paper trading to prop because he doesn't have that much money starting out for trade futures. So I have him doing this. And then with the money that we, that he makes from this, we can use that to fund his own account. Uh, so let me know if all of that made sense. Um, and if you have any questions on that. That was a, a lot of good general information. I definitely learned from that. So I appreciate the uh, mini breakdown there. I have one question though. Uh, it mm -hmm. might be stupid, but what's the difference between a mini and a micro contract? Great question. Also, there are no stupid questions. Uh, so a mini would be like, um, so for example, there is, and I'll just type this out so we can see it. There's ES and then there's MES. This is, Uh, hello, can I edit this, please? This is micro ES, and this is E mini, or the mini country. E ES or MES is the, is the futures for the S&P 500. I'm sure you may have heard the ticker SPY. SPY, so let, let's just do a quick little lesson. This is futures, S&P 500 futures. You might have heard the ticker SPY, SPY. That is an ETF, an exchange traded fund ETF, or you could look at it as a stock. So the S&P 500 futures is ES and MES. The stock of the S&P 500 is SPY. So uh, in futures, there's the, you can think of it like as the parent and then the child. 
The parent is the ES, is the mini, and the child is the micro. The micro is one-tenth the value of the mini. So for ES, you make uh, $50 per point. And then for MES, it's one-tenth the value, $5 per point. So if you want to size down, if you have a smaller account, you may want to look into the micros until you build the account and until you can afford the drawdown or the fluctuations by using a, a, a mini. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that did. Thank you. Perfect. Cool. All right. Uh, all right. We That was a good question. Uh, let's see the next one. Where is this? All right, next question. Uh, fabulous, are you in here? Doesn't look like you are. If you are in here, I think the, the Discord name is fabulous. If you are in here, let me know. If not, I'm skipping you. James, doesn't look like you're in here, so I'll skip that. Uh, Shauna, doesn't look like you're in here, so I'll skip that. Christina is in here. So Christina, you ha you wanted to know, you had strat questions. Uh, what specific strat questions did you have? You can type it in the chat or you can come off mute and let me know what questions you wanted to go over. Hello. Hey, I can hear you. How are you? Hey, can, you can you hear me? How are you? Yes. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm driving. Sorry. Um. So I think mine's is more of the psychology. Is this more of a psychology class, right? Too as well. This is anything. No? Strategy, psychology. Anything. Okay. Strategy, psychology. Cause I, okay. Because I'm I'm kind of struggling with my psychology. Um. And I just kind of wanted to ask, like, what would you say? Because I've traded, like, with indicators for years or a few years, and I, I'm kind of struggling with trying to remove indicators, like the confidence to remove the indicators and only focus on the strat. Because honestly, if I be honest, I still have them as a secondary, just kind of on there. So I don't know if that's, is that bad or or like what? I don't know. Great question. Also, whoever's Great calling. Great question. Also, join also whoever's calling. Join Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my brother. You're good. Uh, I'm going to mute you for as I explain this. I'm going to mute you for as I explain this. All right. So, um, great questions. I used to trade with indicators as well. And when I started with the strat, I trust me, I used to be Mr. Spaghetti Line. I used to have EMAs, RSI, stochastic, TTM squeeze, all that stuff on my chart. Um, but then I, once I started to understand the strat more, I'm like, all right how can I simplify this to make it easier for me? Because what I, what I found happening is that the strat was saying go long, but other indicators will say go short. And then I'll have a lot of conflict. So I'm like, all right, if I'm going to learn the strat, I'm going to learn the strat. So I got rid of everything. As you can see in my chart, this is literally how I trade. Broadening informations, uh, the strat indicator, and that's it. And I'll use like Fibonacci retracements and like ATR, stuff like that. But that exactly how I see my chart, that's how I trade. I don't use anything else because um, whether it's good or bad, um, in my, from what you've told me, it's bad because it's, it's confusing you. It's causing conflict mentally for you. So to me, I would consider that as bad as having your indicators on. Um. So if you're going to learn the strat, you know, just learn the strat in and of itself, because it doesn't matter what the indicate, what the other indicators are saying, price is always going to tell you what's going on. So for me, I would definitely say what can help you go cold turkey, get rid of all the indicators. You can make this, this as a commitment to yourself to reach your trading goal, get rid of all the indicators and only have the strat. Study the strat. Make sure you're drawing your broader information and all of that. I have a lot of material on my YouTube about it, how to draw it properly, et cetera. And just paper trade. Don't use your real money. 
paper trade because you need to build that confidence first to get uh, results. If you're taking these trades live and you're losing, your brain is going to associate the strat with something bad. So you, you're going to shy away from that. So paper trade for the next week. Again, what's a week out of 10 years of you trading to get to get you better, right? Um, like, for example, I paper trade when I'm discovering new setups. So if I identify a setup and I'm like, all right, this looks like a good one that I can add to my playbook. Let me paper trade it for a week. And then after I paper trade for a week or two, and now I'm more comfortable actually taking the trade and I can see the results live per se in paper trading, then I'll go into my live account and take that trade. So it's a step-by-step -step process. You don't want to be like, oh, cool, a new strategy. Let me use my real money. You don't want to do that. You want to take your time. You want to paper trade it, back test it. And then once you're confident and you get results that show that it works, then go into your live money. And, and start small. If you usually use four contracts, you can use like one for a week. And then you can do two and then three and then four until you get to your regular position size. So you don't get so emotional because with the markets, um, as, as some of you have may have heard me say, the markets are uncertain. Our human brain was not designed to be in uncertain situation or in uncertain environments. And once and when, when we have a trading plan or when we're more confident in our system, it can ease the mind a little bit in being less emotional to what's going on. Like, and again, we're human. You cannot escape emotions. I hear, I, I come across people online or other, other like, you know, people te who uh, teach trading. They're like, if you want to be a good trader, you need to get rid of your emotions. That's impossible. We're human. We're emotional creatures. We cannot get out. We cannot remove that. But what you can do is limit what triggers you and, you know, get more information so it can be easier on you mentally. If I get into a trade blindly, my brain is going to go haywire. I'm going to go into fight or flight because it's like, I don't know what's going on. But if I have clear cut definition of a trade, I'm going to get in here. If I'm going to stop out there, I'm going to take profit up here. I have a plan. Now, my only thing to do now is when I get into the trade is wait. That's it. I did my job. And again, you might get emotional even when you're in a trade. You got to ask yourself, when you get emotional in a trade, what's going on? What's coming up for you? Are you looking at your P&L, which is making you emotional? If it is, turn off your P&L. Because your PL is irrelevant to the trade plan. Look at the chart. The chart got you in. Your PL did not. So focus on the chart um, and the plan, the trade plan. You might get emotional if it's just like moving up and down, moving up and down. Again, you did your job. Let the market decide what's going to happen next. We cannot control the outcome. And as humans, we love to control things. So as Randy Howell taught me, you know, you have to, you have to create, you have to build the trader's mind. The trader's mind is very different than a human mind because a trader's mind works in probabilities. I know that this setup, this TTO, it can fail. It's not guaranteed to win. So as a trader, I already know I have a chance to win. I have a chance to lose. Before getting this trade, I'm, 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 I'm willing to accept that I'm going to lose this trade. But a human, if you come in with your ego and you like to be a winner and winning in life, blah, 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 blah. If it hits your stop loss and you don't get out because you don't want to accept the loss, that's bad. That means you're, being, you're bringing the human mind and the ego to trading. And those two things have no place in trading. I'll tell you that from experience. I took a real big loss three years ago because I didn't want to lose. So hopefully that answered your question and more. Um, I did go off on a tangent there, but I just wanted like to fully take. I just wanted like to fully take. the Right. No, it absolutely did. And I think the one thing you said about the losses, I took, you know, a couple hundred dollar losses this, or this week. But it was the what I realized is I did not have an exit strategy. I had an entry strategy. 
but I never had an exit strategy. Um, and so, you know, you think you're going to test it, it's going to test and possibly, so I, I, I learned how to cut my losses too. So no, that, that, that helped me a lot. So I, I'm going to focus on, um, trading this week on my, uh, on, on the other account. So I'll, I'll do that. Excellent. Let's see how that works. Have a rule book. Thank you. Excellent. Have a... That I created my own rules. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Add to your rules every trade. Add to your rules have, every you know, trade. Plan, entry, stop loss, and take profit. Entry, stop loss, and take profit. Wait, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Your create a rule. Your I'm gonna mute, mute you real quick so I don't get feedback. Create this new rule for yourself. Every trade must be fully planned out. If you don't have your entry when you're gonna get in. If you don't have your stop loss and if you don't have your take profit or your target levels, then you cannot get into that trade. You need to have it fully planned out. If not, then you cannot take that trade. Got it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Cool. Uh, let's see. Shania, you're in here. Ashley. Whoever guy is, if you're in here, let me know. It doesn't look like you are, so I'll just skip that. But Shanea, you asked consistency. What specifically do you mean by consistency? Since that's kind of like a broad topic that we can go into. Hey, thank you, Moon, uh, Maria, for stopping by. I'll see you on the internet. Shania, if you can hear me, what do you mean by consistency? Well, hopefully you get back later so you can answer that. Uh, I'll ask, I'll answer Eric's question um, before he left, he said, what is your definition of liquidity? The only word that doesn't stick to me. Uh, liquidity is basically, another word you can use for liquidity is fuel. So let's say buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity. Or you can think of it as fuel that the buyers want or the fuel that the sellers want. So let's say for the sake of the conversation, let me see if, I, if this will be a, a, a decent example. Whoops. So, uh, actually, I want to show you guys a better example, or not a better example, but a different example. Let's just say for the sake of the conversation, it's not a clean version. I wanna show you guys a clean one. If I can find it. Um, I think we can accept this one as, an, as a decent example. So let's say um hold on, got somebody coming in. All right, so let's say uh right here we have welcome flip. Uh let's say we have here we have uh this would be buy side liquidity slash fuel. The sellers that want to take price down need fuel to take that move down. So let's say in this area, we have breakout traders. So they're like, all right, as soon as it breaks this candle's high, I'm right. going to go long. Or you have sellers who may be short 
Mm -hmm. All right. If it breaks, uh, I'm going to be real quick, Philip, because I'm getting feedback. Um, so buyers, if it breaks that high, they're going to be like, all right, I'm going to go long. Whoever, let's say there's people who are shorting, they're like, all right, if it hits this level, I'm going to get stopped out. So all those buyers um, that are buying this breakout, market makers are going to sell that and they're going to stop out the buyers. They're going to take their orders and then all the sellers who got stopped out, they're taking their contracts too, or, or you know, their, their stocks or whatever it may be. Um, and then they're, they're killing it down. So essentially, all the people who have orders sitting here to go long or to, to stop out, they're getting um, they're getting stopped out here because the market makers are going to reverse it back down. Let me know if that makes any sense at all. The, the concept is essentially the market makers need liquidity to, you know, move something, right? So if you're a hedge fund, you know, as a retail trader, you might only use like five contracts. A hedge fund might use like a hundred. So they need those orders to collect from other people to move it where they want to and to get big position sizes. Hopefully that made sense. Let me know in the comments and the replay for whoever's watching this. Cool. All right, uh, Flip, welcome. Any other qu any questions that anybody else has? We still got about 20, 15, 20 more minutes. So whatever question you guys want, uh, want to go over. And it could be mindset related. It can be strategy related. It really doesn't matter. Anything goes. Uh, Flip, did you get the information I sent you well? Oh, yeah, I saw you responded back. Cool. So yeah, any questions you guys have, you can come off mute. You can type it in the chat, whatever you want. Uh, maybe another just pretty simple question, but could you explain like the futures? Um, I'm a financial, I am a licensed financial advisor, but I've only ever worked with like um, ETFs, segregated funds, like stuff of that nature. But I, I'm not, I'm not very well informed about options and futures. Gotcha. What uh, licenses do you have? I'm in Ontario, so I have a FISR license. It's uh, to sell segregated funds and life insurance and health insurance. Nice. I think in America with FINRA, that'll be like a well, life insurance and stuff. I think it's like series six, but Hey, congratulations. I'm studying for mine. I can't wait to be done with them because uh, a lot of, a lot of reading, a lot of studying. I'll tell you that. Anyway. Um, so futures is just like another trading instrument. Um, the simplest way that I can explain futures it's very similar to like regular stock, whether you're going long or you're going short. Um, the only difference is that you need to like dive deep into, which we can go over some examples, is the specific commodity or index or whatever that you're trading. Because for futures, you can trade <laughs> basically anything you want. For people who trade Forex, you can trade like not the pairs, but you can trade like Euro Forex futures. You can trade um, the British pound, Australian dollar, so on and so forth. You can trade treasuries. You can trade Bitcoin futures, Ethereum futures. You can trade chocolate, cocoa futures, oil, um, gold, silver, 
cows, soybean, corn. There's a lot of different things that you can trade. Um, Ash, let's go down the list. Let me just bring this up so we can go over the guide together. Uh, Ashton, uh, where do you know me from? Are you in one of the groups that I support or online? Like somewhere else? I, I happen to just stumble across your one of your posts in Options Millionaire, I think it is, on Reddit. Oh, nice. I haven't been there for a while. They banned me, apparently, because I was like, I don't know, I forgot why they banned me for. Anyway. Yeah, good. I, I just happened to see that you were having a free session, uh, I think, like, probably a month, month and a half ago now. And so I just, I paid to join the Discord, and now I'm just trying to learn more and keep in touch through these trading circles. Sweet. Definitely glad to have you here with us. So I'll just go step by step. Um, so like I mentioned for futures, there's like it's just another trading instrument. Uh, the biggest thing or like, well, there's many things that you want to learn. Um, what people get caught up in is like the symbols, the point value and the tick value. And we'll bring that up to go over it together. So let's go. So we're looking at the S&P 500 E-mini, which is ES. Um, the futures are open from 5 p.m. or sorry, 6 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Can I change this to Eastern time? I don't know what's on Central. Anyway, so futures are market is open from 6 p.m. Eastern time to 5 p.m. Eastern uh, from Sunday through Friday. It's closed the entirety of Saturday and the afternoon of Friday. And then it opens back up at 6 p.m. Sunday. And then it closes at 5 p.m. And then for that one hour, the markets, the futures market is closed. Um, so with futures, there, there's what's called a tick value. The tick value is the increment that the um that the that the contract moves in. So for ES, one tick is worth 12.50 or $12.50. In one point, there are four ticks. So it moves in increments of 25 cents. So in one dollar, in one point, there's four ticks and it moves in increments of 25 cents. Is that making sense before I continue? Yep, I'm on the same page. Cool. And then there's different ones. Like for YM, which is what I usually trade, there isn't a, a like, like one tick is one point. So it doesn't move in increments of like 25 cents, 50 cents, et cetera. It moves in, in like for every point that that's one tick for YM. So one tick, one point, same thing for YM. Um, and then there's like a bunch of other ones. So if you want to trade like metals, like gold, silver, et cetera, you just have to go here and just see how, uh, what it moves in and um, the increments. So you can better understand what you may want to um, adjust depending how you trade it. Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much like a simple introduction to it. The margin requirement, which is different than like, let's say stocks. If I want to buy a, a share of Apple, let's say it's at 200. As we know, you got to pay $200 for one share. For futures, it works a little differently. It work, it, you trade on margin. Um, or it's a margin account that you're using. So there's more like of a margin requirement or a margin maintenance amount. So the way it works for futures, let's go back to Thinkorswim. Actually, no, let's go back to this. Let's go to the margin requirements. So if I wanted to trade one contract of, and different brokers have different margin requirements, um, this will be on trade of eight. So for trade of eight, if you want to day trade one contract of ES, you need to have five hundred dollars in your in the account. Generally, what's recommended is that you have two or three times the amount per contract that you want to trade. So if I want to trade one contract, I would probably use a thousand or fifteen hundred in the account, because if you have five hundred and the trade immediately goes against you and you go under five hundred, the broker is probably going to liquidate your position and kick you out of the trade because you don't have the requirements anymore to hold that trade. But if you have a thousand, you know, you have some leeway until they may close your position automatically. And that protects you and it protects them because with margin, you can go negative in the account. 
And let's say you had one contract and it went negative 20 points. That's negative, that's negative, that's negative a thousand on your initial position, negative 500 on the account. And if you don't pay that, you know, the broker, that's on the broker. That, that's, that's broker. That's the broker's money that they paid. Um, so you can look at it that way. You don't need, you, you're not paying $500 per contract. You just need the requirement of $500 per contract. Now, the initial margin or maintenance requirement is how much you need in the account in order to hold it overnight. Overnight would be from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern or 6 p.m. Eastern, like Friday to, or sorry, 5 p.m. Eastern Friday to like Sunday, 6 p.m. So like the overnight, um, when it's closed, you would need this amount. So to day trade, 500 bucks per ES contract. If you want to swing trade or hold the trade overnight, you need $13,640 to hold that position. If you don't have this amount, when the market closes, they're going to auto sell your position or, they're, or they will margin call you, either one, depending on the broker. Usually they'll just kick you out before the market closes and they'll auto, auto sell your position. Uh, making sense? Any questions on that? So far, still good. Cool. Uh, let's go. What's the next portion? And you said you're in Canada, right? Yeah, I'm correct. I'm in Ontario. Nice. I'm going to go up there and see some friends. Beautiful place. Um, so there's different brokers that you can use. I think Thinkorswim was available to Canadian individuals when it was still on the TDA. But after Schwab acquired them, it's only for, I think, U.S. clients now. But this Trade Evade, Trade TradeStation, NinjaTrader, there's a bunch of different ones. I've only ever used Trade Evade, Trade TradeStation, and uh, Thinkorswim, Trade Futures. Um, Trade Station and Trade Evade, you can connect to TradingView. So you can go to your trading panel, click on Trade Evade, log in um, to the account that you want to log in, log in on, and then you can just trade directly from your chart if you wanted to. Some people like doing that. Really depends. Um, what else? If you're in my Discord, which I think you mentioned you are, uh, in the futures guide, I have like all this information here as well. And any questions that come up, you know, please let me know and I'll answer it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much like a quick little crash course on futures. If I were to start trading from the beginning, like when I first started. I would trade futures because, you know, I can trade like a micro contract of ES, let's say, for only 50 bucks. And you can use that to build your account and go from there. Um, when I first started, pe people like this way to me, like, oh, futures are scary. You can lose a lot of money. But I'm like, you can lose a lot of money with anything if you don't understand it. So when I discovered that futures literally just going long or short, I'm like, this is just like when I used to short penny stocks or go long on stocks or go short on stocks. It's just a different instrument. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much a little mini crash course on futures in a nutshell. Any other questions that you may have, Ashton, or anybody else? I'm still just kind of like um, not processing the information, but just working through what we're talking about. So I don't have anything else, but thank you very much for answering those questions. I can show you a live example, actually. Hold on. Let me, let me log into Thinkorswim paper and then I can show you because the futures market is open right now. Uh, let's log out. Give me a sec. I got to log back in on the paper trading side. Uh, let's open up another instance. I would show you on TradingView, but I don't use... Uh, I don't I don't pay for data on TradingView anymore. 
so I can't show you live. Thinkorswim has everything for free, which is excellent. If you're a non-professional subscriber, to be specific. All right, there we go. Let me share my screen again. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Yep. Cool. All right. So we're looking at YM. So let's just say I'm going to go long. I'm just going to buy market. So now I'm long one contract of YM at 43.67. If it goes a point or a tick above my entry, I'll make $5. If it goes against me, then I'll lose $5 until I get stopped out. And think of it like stocks. As long as it doesn't hit your, your stop loss or take profit, you don't lose value on the trade. Similar to options, where it just by holding the trade due to theta, it'll just eat up the, con the value of the contract because time is passing by. So we can see that from my entry, 367, it's at 368, I'm up five bucks or one point. So... Uh, let's say I want to get out of the trade at nine. And so I want to make 10 bucks. Let's just sell. Uh, yeah, let's sell to close right up there. And I'll put a stop loss order down here. So if it, uh, let's edit this. Let's do a stop order, confirm, send. So now if it hits uh, 364, I'm going to lose 15 bucks. Or if it's my target, I'm going to make 10 bucks or whatever it may be, depending on what you have set up. And let's see which one happens first. The markets are a little slow right now because, you know, it's after hours. I think like it, this is Asia session, which is usually slow. It picks up around like noon. I mean, uh, midnight. Sometimes you'll get good moves around this time. Um, I personally only trade 9.30 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern. Um, so I know people who trade London session or, you know, pre-market, stuff like that. It really depends on what you prefer. I like sleeping, so I just trade the, the, the New York morning session and keep it simple. Any second now, literally 1.08. Just has to fill those four orders and get me out. This always happens every time I have a live class. Granted, you know, it's after hours. There we go. So the, posi the position closed. Let me flatten all my trades. So there's no pending orders. And I made 10 bucks on that trade. Easy enough. Just like buying stock. If you go long, you make money when it goes up. If you short it, you lose money or you make money when it goes down and vice versa. So was that one uh, micro contract that you were just trading? This was a mini, a mini contract. So like the parent uh, contract. If I go to MYM, which is the micro, it's 50 cents a point. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna buy market. And then we can see here on the PL screen, let's see if it goes higher. So we can see an example, or if it goes lower, so we can see an example as well. And let's just sell limit here. And then let's stop out. Would it be a sell stop? Yeah, I'm long. All right, yep, sell stop. So this is my stop loss. This is my take profit right here. Let's see where we go. I got in at um, 43.70. It's one point above my entry. I believe you said this was think or swim. Um, are, are there like trading fees? So like, is there like, would you not want to make like a very small trade because you're going to lose money on the trade regardless? Or like, how does that work? Yeah. So for think or swim, like starting out, they charge you, I think it's $2 and 25 cents per trip. 
So if I buy, that's 225. If I sell, that's 225, 450 round trip. That is really high um, compared to other brokers. Like for Trade of Eight, I pay maybe 350 to $4 round trip. Um, but granted, for futures, you can make a good amount of money. And, uh, and with most things, you, you have to pay to play. So uh, to me personally, unless you can call like your broker to bring down your, your fees, I people usually don't like using Thinkorswim um, for futures. Uh, since I trade a lot more frequently, I did call Schwab and they lowered my rate. Um, so I think I pay like 190 or 185 buying and selling. So it's a, it's a little better economically, but you're still going to pay fees. Like for Trade of Eight, uh, so far this month, uh, let me see if I can bring it up. Mm -hmm. Let's do this month. Uh, this month so far, I've paid about $110 in fees. Does it have last month? Last month, I paid about uh, $210 in fees. I took 55 trades. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's just another business expense as with anything. So it makes sense. To me. I'm just curious when you're like, I guess, doing the math, because like, with these um, micro contracts, like you'd have to go up, I guess, 10 points just to kind of break that threshold of it even being profitable above the fee for buying and selling. Yeah, exactly. And with like other brokers, like Schwab or Thinkorswim, they don't discriminate if it's a micro or mini. So if it's a micro, you're still going to get hit with a 225 one way or each way. So 450 total, which to me is wild. For trade of eight, I think it's like $1.50. So like 75, 80 cents round trip. Which is a lot more manageable than four fifty for a mic for one micro. So, to me, it wouldn't be worth it if you're going to trade one micro, because if for MYM I need to make eight points just to break even on the trade, whether I win or lose. So, uh, I like Trade of Eight. I think I think it works in Canada too. Uh, one thing I do love about Trade of Eight is um, you can do it similarly as well, just like all the features they have, like with the bracket orders. So like, let's say right now, if I wanted to go short two contracts, this specific setting that I have, it's going to stop me out here automatically, and it's going to take profit here. And then if I want to adjust the order, I can just do it on the screen really quickly. So I don't even have to babysit the trade. I can just walk away and it'll do its thing. But yeah, there's a bunch of platforms out there. You can search around, see which one you like best, and then go from there. I just use Trade of Eight um, personally. All I guess right. slightly unrelated, but to like throw another question to the mix, like what's your professional background? Like how long have you been doing trading, whether that's options or just regular stocks, anything? So I've been trading for for almost five years now. I tr started trading, when I got into it, I started trading penny stocks uh, that my first mentor taught me. And then I discovered options. Uh, I think the same year, I think the same year I discovered options. Um, and then I started trading crypto and like Forex, probably like a year or two after that. And then futures, I started trading about uh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. Um, from one of my other strat mentors since he started trading with futures. Um, but that's pretty much my background when it comes to uh, trading. Outside of trading professionally, I went to school to be a psychologist, which is a little poetic because I didn't want to continue going to school. And here I am helping people with their mind mentality stuff anyway. It's just in relation to trading. I am also a life coach um, outside of trading to, you know, get people's lives together and help them with that and stuff like that. So that's a little bit of my background.
Cool. All right. Any uh, last questions before we wrap up? I'll take one more question. If no question, then we will uh, start wrapping up the session. And just, are you here every Sunday to ask questions? So the trader circle is uh, once a month. So the trader circle is every Sunday, every second Sunday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern, just so I can keep it uniform and everybody knows, all right, this second Sunday, Advent's going to have a class. I do hold other classes like this for other groups that I support, but that those um, group sessions are called the less the let's learn series um, that I have like before this session on my YouTube I'll usually have them live there where um, I'll the other groups that I support I just have all of them join that one link and then we just all ask the questions together so I usually do those um, so I have one for one group in the first Sunday of the month same time 8 p.m then I have mine on the second Sunday. And then sometimes I'll bunch them up like I did the other groups today as opposed to next week, just because I'm gonna be traveling to New York and <laughs> I wanna be relaxed when I'm up there. Um, but yeah, I usually have uh, one in the beginning of the month. The second one is mine. Then the third week I have like for the other groups. And then the last Sunday is usually just nothing that I do. Um, I also have every Friday at Eight, I know every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, um, I have a trade recap. So we'll go over my trades and we'll go and I can go over your trades to give you feedback on it, what you did well, what you can improve on, so on and so forth. And the trade recaps and the Let's Learn series will be live on my YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you can definitely do so so you can get notified when I'm going to have one. And the same, and the link, same, sorry, uh, the same link that you use to book this session is the same link that you use for every other trader circle moving forward. It would always be the same link. You just have to flip through the month uh, to to sign up. Okay, thank you. Of course. So with that, uh, we'll just wrap it up. Uh, what was everybody's biggest takeaway or what was the biggest thing that you learned in today's session? And for those watching on the replay, what was your biggest takeaway or the biggest thing that you learned today? I guess I was so good that everybody is brain imploded with all the new knowledge they learned. And don't swing futures. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, the only way, the only time you can like get away with swinging futures per se is you can like people who trade Forex, they'll trade like, SPX 500 or US 50 or 500, US 100 or like the NAS, NAS 100 or US 30, stuff like that, which are like derivatives or CFDs, which mimic the futures equivalent. And those you can swing with like less um, margin or requirements for the Forex brokers. Uh, but I don't swing trade futures at all. I'm in and out same day. Uh, yep, definitely know your entry and your exit, Christina. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Ashton, definitely got more insight to the structure of prop firms and how the challenges work using paper trading. Learned in general what futures are and when the markets are alive, as well as how the mini and micros work. Yeah, definitely. Great information. Um, Shania mentioned as well. Uh, she took away getting, uh, not getting into a trade until you have mapped the trade out completely, 100%. And 
And it's with anything, you know, you can apply this concept with anything. If I'm going to go open a restaurant business, I'm going to have the menu. I, I'm going to know the chef. I'm going to know the layout of the restaurant. I'm going to have everything in order before I even open up the business or else what are you doing? You're setting yourself up for failure. You know, I don't open a restaurant and be like, all right, what's the plan? It's like, what are you doing? What's the business plan? In this case for trading, what's the trading plan? So you can just look, uh, think of that concept and apply it to trading. Cool. Uh, so yeah, with that, appreciate you guys as always uh, for coming out. The replay for this session, the Trader Circle, is going to be posted on the YouTube. Uh, if it processes in time, probably 11 tonight or midnight Eastern. If not, I'll have it. Um, I'll schedule it for like tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. It'll be in the uh, Trader Circle playlist on my YouTube and all the previous ones that we've ever had are in there as well. If you guys want to go back through other classes that I've had. Um, other than that, uh, thank you guys as always for coming out. Appreciate you for asking the questions and I will see you guys on the internet. Enjoy your Sunday and I'll see you tomorrow.